Physical pain is a very real sensation and it is subjective. Different people feel pain to varying degrees. But it's very hard to compare different types of pain or levels or intensity of pain because pain as a concept is just hard to quantify. The only way to truly understand the level and intensity of pain or what a person experiences is by studying brain scans in real time and understanding the signals in the brain that are used in pain processing and responses to pain. Researchers have been doing this for a while in an attempt to understand how the brain works with pain and this is especially challenging for long term or chronic pain. And now finally, a team of researchers have the early answers to how pain is processed in the brain and how acute pain differs from chronic pain. While it is hard to compare and quantify pain, we know that just like any other illness, there are two broad categories of pain as well, acute and chronic. Any kind of pain that lasts for over 12 weeks is considered to be chronic and it has to be dealt with. This kind of pain can be triggered after a stroke or could be long term, say, back pain or even a phantom limb pain. And of course, pain from ailments like cancer, AIDS, MS and so on. Chronic pain leads to disability. It increases anxiety and depression. It increases dependence on opioids and in general, it lowers quality of life tremendously. Chronic pain as an issue is a big problem in public health. And it is also a socio-economic problem because people financially tank trying to manage their pain, whether it is with medication or opioids and of course the loss of opportunity. The researchers in this American team decided to look for biomarkers of pain in the brain so that it could help in diagnosis and also develop or guide potential therapeutics for chronic pain in the future. The team recruited four people for this preliminary study and all four of them were suffering from chronic pain. Three had post-stroke pain and one had phantom limb pain. The scientists implanted recording electrodes inside two parts of the brain that are associated with pain, the anterior cingulate cortex and the orbitofrontal cortex. Over the next three to six months, as a part of this experiment, the team observed brain scans of these four people whenever participants self-reported pain. The researchers found that with chronic pain, there was a day-night pattern and also frequent fluctuations in patterns, not as much as with acute pain. However, the participants reported chronic pain symptoms and their intensity of perceived pain the brain signals correspondingly were recorded and they also seemed to reflect the pattern. The researchers also administered physical pain, thermal pain of various intensities. This isn't chronic, but it of course can be acute. The patients had to self-report the intensity of this pain as well and their brain readings at the time of experiencing pain were recorded. As expected now, the scientists of course found that the brain signals matched with the intensity of pain each person subjectively experienced and just using these scans, the team was able to predict the severity of pain as well. During an experimental heat pain task, the team was also able to predict acute thermal pain thanks to ML or algorithmic processing of existing neural data. What's more, the team was also able to obtain biosignatures for chronic and acute pain separately in the brain. Chronic pain signals were more strongly associated with the orbitofrontal cortex activity, whereas acute pain from these experiments was more strongly associated with the anterior cingulate cortex activity. There is a very complex and intricate neural network that works with pain detection and response. While there have been studies before, it is with this study that scientists have been able to tell that the orbitofrontal cortex can be specifically used to study and treat chronic pain for neuropathic pain syndromes, such as post-stroke pain or phantom limb syndrome. It is the same region of the brain that is also associated with reward, punishment and placebo effects. The findings from this experiment will be used to push for further experiments with more participants, solid research, solid results and better insights. But they are quite exciting from a therapeutic point of view. 
मे बी अबाउट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स डाउन द लाइन वेन वी गो टू हॉस्पिटल आर ब्रेन्स कैन जस्ट बी स्कैंड इवन नॉन इन्वेसिवली फॉर पर्सनलाइज बायो मार्कर्स ऑफ पेन एंड अ पर्सनलाइज ट्रीटमेंट कुड बी प्रोवाइडेड टू अलीविएट पेन और मैनेज आर पेन स्टेट 